Hello guys, it's Rob Moringa here. I hope you're doing very, very well. Uh, I know what you're thinking. Why haven't I subscribed yet? And I know you're also thinking, has Rob finally sold his soul, conjured up the end of days? I think if you read your Notre Dame's charts, this is one of the signs I do in fact have a selfie stick. I'm going to apologise profusely for that, but it stops the camera shaking so much. I'm currently staying in the countryside, walking around my friend's house, and I'm going to, <laughs> today I'm going to give you my uh, top five daily habits for beating depression, anxiety, and depersonalization. So please excuse me because people are going to think I'm filming them. I might have to stop and say hello to them sometimes, hopefully not. Anyway, so tip one, which is perhaps um, the most obvious, is to exercise. See all that behind me? If you exercise, you might not even feel it at the time, but it's a proven scientific fact that endorphins are released, your muscles, your muscles actually minorly tear and then repair themselves, which makes them stronger. So even a 10 minute jog will do that. It, it makes your organs stronger, makes your heart stronger, makes your brain stronger, obviously makes your cardiovascular um, system stronger. It shoots, fires oxygen around um, through the blood. <laughs> watching, the, watching a dog poo and a lady's watching me watching a dog poo. There he is. Yeah, so I really cannot emphasize it enough. I never wake up in the mood for exercise ever, but once I've done it, I always feel better. Even if I still feel bad, I feel I feel less bad. You know, it, it just even five minutes stretching counts. You know, that's that's yoga. It's getting you more in touch with your body. It's, it's calming you down. It's getting your mind off of your neurotic, constantly changing um, flow of thoughts, which you probably noticed that you have. Okay, so tip two would be. Avoid excessive solitude. Um, I know how bad excessive solitude can be, which is why I'm now staying in the countryside uh, for this for this, <laughs> for this uh, lockdown thing. Um, it really does sneak up on you. You can you can sort of think you're okay. Hello, how are you? I got my cloak. This is like up with some. I'm just talking to a young lady. Hello. Why you don't have any shoes on? I just forgot actually. It's too hot. It's quite nice on the grass without yeah. shoes, as long as you're careful of thorns and stuff. Yeah. And look, they're gonna let me have our shoes on. I like your shoes. Have a good day. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that was a bit of a, a detour. So, um <laughs> It's so friendly around here. I like it in the countryside. It's got that it's even got that shire that shire accent, which I I'm sure, which I can't do. So, where were we? Yes. Um, avoiding excessive solitude. So even a diary, or like a... My least favourite word in the world, unfortunately, but it's kind of what this is, a vlog. Oof. Don't ever... Let's never say that again. Um, even writing down what you're thinking for five or ten minutes, or just talking into a camera, even if you have no intention of, of publicising it. Maybe, especially if you don't have any intention of publicising it, it'll be better. Uh, Allen Ginsberg said about how his book it was his best book because he never intended for anyone to read it. So he wasn't um, self-censoring. Obviously that's no replacement for actual human company, <laughs> um, which I'm sure you know. But even just a voice on the other end of the phone for two minutes can, can make a big help if you're literally stuck in on your own and you've bought a big whole propaganda and you're going to die if you go outside. Uh, and all that stuff. So I did actually make a very long video critiquing the lockdown, the total lockdown, which not all countries have done. Um, but I want to stay on YouTube, so I didn't do it and I was worried I might be wrong and it, it could be a bit dangerous. Okay, so last thing on solitude, having company around, even if it's a different species, brings out different sides of your nature, you know? Um, you, it's like the incentives are different. If you wake up, it's very easy to mope around doing nothing and, and then your depression gets worse and you, you feel really sad. Um, if, there's a, if you wake up with a dog or a cat or a, any any animal really, uh, let alone a homo sapien, um, it's immediately, <laughs> immediately sets the day off on a different tone, a more bright sunny tone, you know? Um, again, the, I know you watch, if, if it's not an option for you at the minute, if you really have scared yourself into not seeing anyone, 
or, or everyone you know has scared themselves into not seeing anyone, which is the case with my friends, pretty much. Um, it's going to be difficult. It's, it's it's not the same, is it, on Skype or Zoom or or whatever. It's, it's all through staring at the screens. You know, the machine marches onwards. Um, but yeah, like I say, anything just to, anything to externalise what's going on in your head. Writing down, speaking, calling someone. Okay, food. Number three. Food, food, food. You are what you eat. You are what you read. You are what you watch. You are what you say, um, etc. If you wake up and eat a huge bowl of Frosties with white sugar, which is just brown sugar with bleach in it, and cow's milk or cow breast secretions, more accurately, you are going to have a big sugar crash one or two hours after that and your mood is going to be all over the place. Whereas if you wake up and have something full of protein, fat, fibre, vitamins, you know, think, think, if, think some eggs, maybe some ginger, uh, veggie sausages, not about real sausages because there's a phrase, there's a reason the phrase is, let's see how the sausage is made. That's it's all like the, the floor scrapings from the abattoir. Um, but yes, refined carbohydrates like pastas and uh, sugar, anything with sugar really, anything with bread, um, spaghetti, rice, too much of it or even any of it really can really affect your mood. And I know so many people see, see it as a staple, but the guy who invented the food pyramid, one of, one of the collaborators on it, did say the biggest regret of his career was um, putting carbohydrates, grains, in the food pyramid. I'm not an expert, but just think about what sits best with um, your body. That little girl was right actually, why am I not wearing shoes? This is quite painful. Ugh. Okay, what was number four? I even wrote them down. <laughs> Forced appreciation. So, if you can... I used to do this, and it, and it worked. It comes a little bit more naturally now, but if you can... No matter how terrible, or spun out, or dizzy, or derealized, or depersonalized, or dissociated, or depressed, or anxious, or feeling like you're going to pass out, you can say to yourself over and over again for like two minutes, um, I am really grateful that I can walk. Or I'm really grateful that I am not currently living in a war-torn country. Or I'm really grateful that I'm not in a very small terrace house with people I hate and no garden um, for lockdown. Sorry, some of you are in that position. Uh, didn't mean to rub any salt in the wound. Um, Gratitude. Yeah, I've, I've lost track of the amount of people who I consider very wise. Let's, keep, let's just keep walking. Hopefully I won't step in any uh... I'm trying to clean up the channel, language-wise, content-wise, so let's hope we don't step in any um, excrement. <laughs> it's actually taking my mind off task. I might have to stop here. Let's turn around, because I know there's a... It's going to be non... Um, not in front of me. So yes, make it a practice. I would recommend of thinking one thing you can be grateful for. Everyone's got one thing. Think think of um, a Sam Harris technique. It's a, whenever he's starting to feel stressed or anxious or depressed or irritated, think of something that you would pay a million pounds to not be going through right now. Do you know what I mean? There was a, the, a prison called the Clink Prison. I think it was the original name. It's the Clink Prison Museum now. But for, for particularly naughty people, they had a cellar that was basically just flooded with two foot of the Thames and, and rats and shit and people who've been in there for years and just left there to die. So you're not there, okay? That's something we can all appreciate. I doubt you're watching this if you're in that position. Um, it's a cliche, but trying to focus on what you do have rather than what you don't have. Yoga and meditation do help with that because you're addressing what's going on with you right now, not what you'd like to be or what, what you're fantasizing about. Uh, I really don't want to go on about meditation too much, but it is tip five. So, if I had to pick one of the tips to do every day, if I had to only do one, it would probably be meditation. It is literally like going to the gym for 20 minutes, but for your mind. Um, I just cannot stress how helpful it's been to me and to people I know. Um, I know a lot of people have a knee-jerk mental refusal to do it. Um, I don't need to do that, it's, it's too, I'll get anxious, I'll get too bored, I'll get too, it's too esoteric, it's a waste of time, there's no science behind it. Fair enough, um, I would dispute 
all of that. It's base. It's you're just becoming a witness of what's going on inside your mind, your consciousness, instead of a victim of it. That's all there is to it. Uh, I rec- there's some very good guided um, meditations around there, around the place. Oh, nearly walked on a cat. <laughs> uh, I'd recommend those. Sam Harris's app I'm always talking about, but there's plenty on them. Eckhart Tolle is good as well. Tolle, it's German, it's not Tolle. Um, yeah, he can, can be very good. Especially in times like this. Strange, isn't it? Because it's sort of enforced idleness. Um, by the way, if there's any police watching, I've just done a small circle of this block, if that's all right. And it was less than an hour. Um, well, in enforced idleness, you'd think there'd be no better time than to um, observe the mind. But in a way, it becomes the most difficult time because it can be very stressed and strained. With people. Although they're the, those of us who've had depersonalization, derealization, stuff like that going on for a while, um, you know, extreme fear of uh, going outside or social situations is nothing new. So, <laughs> but for the rest of you, I you know. I feel for you, but I, and I know it might seem like a bad time to start a spiritual practice, but when you think about it, it's probably the best time because it's, it's all about staying calm and staying sane and um, regulating emotions, limbic system, parasympathetic nervous system, you know? All right, guys, I'll just do a quick recap, partly because my feet are killing me and partly because people keep looking at me strangely, because obviously the camera's pointing that way, so it looks like I'm filming people. So. Tip one, it's exercise. You cannot stress it enough. Even if you don't feel like you don't benefit from it, you are. Your, your muscles are, like I say, slightly breaking themselves and repairing and becoming stronger and your heart's becoming stronger and your organs, all of them are becoming stronger. Heart, brain, skin. Well, they're all organs, so obviously, yes. Okay, tip two, avoiding excessive solitude. Um, tip three, eat some good food. Do not sit there and eat... Um, Cheetos all day, or whatever the uh, equivalent is of yours. Um, some terrible crisps or chips and a sliced white bread, which even George Orwell, when he was homeless, said people shouldn't be eating. So avoid that one. All right. Uh, <laughs> number four was a bit, force some appreciation or gratitude into your life. You know, if you're sat if you're sat there watching this and there's someone else in the house with you. Be very grateful for that. Do you have any idea how many people are going insane right now, or how many people have killed themselves, or how many people are probably permanently agoraphobic, you know? Uh, especially the healthy old people who we claim to be protecting. Okay, and number five, of course, was meditation. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it there for the aforementioned reasons, and this is getting a bit long. Uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Never done one walking around before. I quite enjoyed it. Um, please leave comments down below. It, the most gratifying thing about this channel, or the most ego validating thing, maybe that's the same thing, is is the comments that I get. Not all of them, because some of them are very insulting. But some, <laughs> it's people, you know, people sharing their stories is, is is very interesting, and people saying that I've helped them motivates me to keep going. And it's a bit like screaming into the void when. Um, no one likes it or or comments below, so please do it or else I'll be screaming into the void and I'll get all depressed. Um, just bear in mind, I've had, and it's ongoing, and it probably will be ongoing, quite extreme anxiety and depression and, and depersonalization for a while. So this is not a hollow, cheap video, I like to think. These things do work. Um, treat them like an ideal. You're not going to do it 100% of the time. Aim for 95%, 90%, whatever you want. Anything lower than that, you might start to slip. All right, guys, just keep up the discipline. Do your daily things, and you will, your body and mind will take care of themselves as long as you do those things. Okay? All right, speak to you soon. Bye-bye.